Before I start to talk about Pakistan, um, it's pretty hard to not think about the fact that today's September 12th, which obviously means that yesterday was September 11th. And I wanted to just take a moment of silence, just a few seconds, for the people that died here on September 11th, victims ultimately of religious intolerance, people who wanted to um, have their own way. And if we could just, as brothers and sisters, if we could just take a moment to remember them. Thank you. So our brothers and sisters in Pakistan are under attack, dislocated, <clears throat> persecuted, being told um, that people who are different than them or that pray different than them are, are evil. It's not enough for us tonight to disapprove of what's happening there. They need our support. So often when I tell my friends I'm going back to Pakistan, maybe not my friends, maybe people that don't know me as well, I say, why? why what is it about Pakistan? This is remembering after September 11th and seeing the street scenes of you know, people celebrating September 11th, and in some cases celebrating Osama bin Laden. Why, why do you go there? They hate us. And my response is, who's they? Pakistan's a country of 170 million people. Pakistan's bigger than Great Britain and Germany put together, far bigger. Yes, there's people in Pakistan that hate us. But the great, great majority of the people in Pakistan want exactly what we want. They want a better life for their children. They want to have choices. They just want to breathe. And so often, it, it gets screwed up because of all of the distorting filters on both sides. The distorting filters of religious and political leaders on both sides both sides being in Pakistan and here, the distorting filters of the media, the distorting filters of just our own biases and, and prejudices and, in some cases, self-interest. I wanted to read something, a letter that I wrote, not a whole letter, but um, a couple of lines, that I wrote right after September 11th. In fact, it was when I was in Pakistan, um, Amin mentioned that I was there right afterwards. I wrote this note from Peshawar in the hopes of tearing away some of those distorting filters. So I wrote, I realize that war is hell and that innocent people will inevitably be affected, but being in the middle of the misery made me realize just how far ranging the victims of September 11th really are. Post-September 11th is certainly about our safety, but it's also very much about our soul. How do we encounter and engage evil without losing a little bit of our own humanity? Yes, I've seen intense, even menacing street demonstrations, but is the relevant story that thousands of people are demonstrating and maybe even burning some American flags? Or is it that in a city of millions, Karachi, that only one out of a thousand is participating. The scintillating picture for TV is the mob scene, but the informed perspective is the, is the statistic. Far from the image of strident supporters of international terrorism, I have seen and experienced friendship in Pakistan that is more considerate, genuine, 
and passionate than virtually any that I have experienced anywhere in the world. I'm sure there are mean-spirited, even, even, even evil people in Pakistan, but my guess is that the percentage is no higher and very possibly lower than in the United States. So much truth gets lost through broad generalizations and bias. So what are we going to do about these filters? Again, it's not enough to just, to just disapprove. How do we tear them away? How do we understand one another as human beings? So it's not those people. It's not us and them. It's, it's all of us together. There's no magic wand. There's no, I can't just go like this and make it all happen. We all have to take our own actions, what I refer to as, as concrete baby steps. What do I mean by concrete baby steps? We can inform ourselves. What, what does the Quran say about uh, women's rights? What does the Quran say about jihad? Are we going to leave the interpretation to Fox News? Are we going to leave the interpretation to extreme religious leaders? I hope not. Let's fight prejudice with open-mindedness and benefit of the doubt. Fight ignorance with knowledge. Let's get smarter, better informed. We can't let political and religious leaders tell us who we should like and why we should like them. For God's sakes, the planet is melting. We have to be able to get this other stuff straight. We have, we have, a, we have a, a common path to take. One of the things that I thought would be helpful tonight in tearing away filters is having a look at some of the photographs that Amin was referring to. These are photographs that I've taken of children. These children are, they live in refugee camps. They live in alleyways. They live in remote villages. They're some of the most anonymous humans in the world. And yet tonight, they're here in the General Assembly Hall of the United Nations. The idea of these photographs is that when you look into their eyes, you see possibilities, you, street, you see strength, and you see hope. Not in all of them, but in many of them. And hope isn't just nice. Hope is a game changer. Hope is something that people need, the fuel that they need to move forward. A light, no matter, no matter how small, at the end of the tunnel to, to follow. So the photographs that you'll see right now are, 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 are applied to um, a song called Invisible Sun. Invisible Sun is about hope and the power of hope. And it was written by my great friend Sting and performed by the police. The, um, these are the kids um, of Pakistan and of the Afghan refugee camps. Close. 
was all night It's like just some more kind of settling light I face the day with my head caved in Looking like something that the cat bought in It has to be an invisible sun Gives its heat to my world It has to be an invisible sun Cigarette. 